Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Jung here at uh, Faith Lutheran Church in Park, California. Uh, blessings to you this day, and uh, whenever you are listening to this, um, I hope it goes well with you. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to dwell upon uh, the love of God. And what is love? What does this mean? Why don't we begin with a word of prayer? Dearly Father, O oh Lord, we thank you for this day that you have given to us. We thank you for the provisions and, and your continued mercy as you lead us by your grace. Lord, bless us in the comforting love that you give, the unique love that uh, is given through the sending of your Son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, through your sacrifice, you have given us life, forgiveness, and salvation. Bless us, O oh Lord, in this gift, and lead us, O oh Lord, in your peace. For all these things we are thankful. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, well, today uh, we're, we're going to speak about love. What does this mean? I know we live in such a world right now that is full of a lot of different conflicts and challenges and uh, just much affliction that is groaning in our world today. Uh, and Yes, it, you know, when I think of loving one another, when I think of love, um, such an important aspect of this love and the strive to love one another is to understand what true love is. Now, you know, as Lutherans, you know, we always uh, go through adult instruction class, and uh, the greatest love that we know uh, as we talk about the attributes of God is that God is you know, merciful, gracious, he is just, um, he is kind, he is patient, all these things. But at the end of the day, the full embodiment of God is that, as it reads in Scripture, that God is love. I don't know if you have the handout here, uh, but please uh, look over that if you are able, as this will uh, kind of give us the, the framework to which we study here today. But love, right? Love. What is going on with love? And uh, yes, Apostles' Creed, uh, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived uh, by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Those are the first two articles of the creed. Now, when we speak of love, for me, uh, always I go to the unique love that God gives to us. Now, what is that unique love? Now, in 1 John 4, it reads, Beloved, let us love one another. This is verse 7 and 8 in 1 John. Uh, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And anyone who does not love God does not know God, because God is love. Now, love. What is love, right? That, that is such a, uh, just such a, a deep question. What is love? I think we all have a different uh, definition of what love truly is. I, I think for a lot of people, there's types of love. Let's say, you know, whoever likes uh, the eagles, not the band, but the, um, or you can like the Eagles, uh, but uh, the sports team, football team, Philadelphia Eagles. What is Philadelphia called? City of brotherly love from the Greek word phileo. Um, and that is kind of that general uh, concern, right? Sorry, types of love. Concern and care for one another, right? Um, and this is that natural brotherly love uh, for, for the neighbor, right? And when we talk about the world today, man, my, my, hold on one second. I'll be right back. I can get another pen.
All right, when we, uh, when we speak of uh, the, the Philadelphia, right, uh, the city of brotherly love, Philae, which means love, and, and Adelphia, Adelphos is brother, so city of brotherly love, right, is that concern and care for neighbors. So these are the types of love. Uh, there's also a storge. There we go. Storge, a type of love that is kind of a familial Family mutual love, right? There's the the eros, uh, the erao from the Greek. The erao or the eros is uh, what is that? That's the physical cravings, right? Physical desires of love, fleshly, right? Of love. Now, again, wh why do I say this? Because I think when we, when we go with the term God is love, um, a lot of people have different understandings of what love is, and they can go in these ways. Now, in so many different definitions, there's also, lastly, there is the, the agapao, the, the agape love. And that agape love is God's activity. His loving activity. Now, the question is for, for all of us today, as we read that First John 4, I think this is very applicable in a sense of, of what we are dealing with in our world today, right? Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. So when we speak of love, it's not from ourselves, but it originates, its, its root, its basis is in God's love. And, well, in order to love, we need to know what God's love truly is, right? Um, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Remember, in the Greek, as we look at this, it's all the word of agape. Right? Everything is rooted in the love of God. And we're going to talk about that today. Um, in that in that first John four seven to eight, it's all um, agapao or agape, uh, the, this love that is rooted in God's activity. Uh, anyways, anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love, right? God is love. First uh, John four nineteen says we love because our Lord God loved us first. Like we know how to love by the one who loved us first. Now, understanding what that love is is so important. I don't know why I'm yelling, but that's just what I do. <laughs> I'm in a good mood, by the way. But, uh, uh, but understanding the love of God is so important because then we know, I guess in a sense, of what this true love is from God, but how to proceed in his love to love one another. Um. And uh, this is uh, such an important thing to, to learn today or to review for many of you. Again, uh, this is Apostles' Creed Article 2 pertaining to Jesus, redemption, paying the price. We're going to talk about that today. Uh, if any of you ever need uh, some, some tips on that, you can always go on our website, www.faithmorepark.com. Uh, go under the beliefs section and go under the small catechism. And, and there you'll see our teachings on uh, the redemption, Apostles' Creed Article 2. Um, uh, I encourage you to, to look at that. There's a lot of stuff there uh, to kind of digest, and I encourage you to do that. I know Jeff does a great job of just blasting all this material on there, and um, there's a lot of stuff on the website, a lot of teaching stuff. That's kind of the big, big thing here at Faith Lutheran. We're always teaching. If you ever need to be taught, let me know. I'm here to teach um, you, whoever that is, you. It's never too late. Never too late. Never too late. It's never too early either, right? Anyways, so the point is the types of love, right? We see it right here. Now, what is, okay, so we got the physical, we got the familial, right? We got the general concern for the, the brother, right? The, the, the concern, concern and care for the neighbor. But what is God's love? Like, why is that so, why is his love so unique, all this love that we're talking about in 1 John 4 is rooted in the reality that God is love. All right. So, quickly, you got the, 
the four main food groups of love here. Now we're going to uh, go with God is love. Now, what is love? What does this mean? We know, um, I know uh, uh, such, a, such a famous verse that even I think anyone of this world would know. Uh, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, uh, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. He loved the cosmos. He loved this world. What does he do? He loves us so much that he gave us his only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Right? We've heard this Bible verse time and time again. But what does John 3.16 really mean? Right? It says, for God so loved the world. He loved the world. In the beginning, there was God and man. God created, in Genesis, man in his own image. He gave them dominion over all things, Adam and Eve, and, and he gave them all things. Uh, they had power over everything. Uh, God said, do not eat from this tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, lest you will die. Right? So, God in the beginning created man and woman, and there they had everything. But then what happened? God said, Do not eat from this tree. But Adam and Eve was there one day, and Satan came, the evil foe, and he, well, said, If you eat from this tree, you will not die. You will live. You will be like God. Right? And there we know in Genesis chapter 3, the first Sin, original sin. The sin that brought the hammer down unto all of humanity. The sin that broke up this relationship because of their sin. Now, God and man are separated, right? Because of their sin, because they did not fear love and trust God above all things. That's the first commandment, right? They broke his word. They fell short to the glory of God. Now, because of their sin, God and man are separated, right? That's why when, when we look at John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he loved the world that he gave. Why did he have to give his son? Why did he have to give his son? And that's the question in terms of what does it mean that God is love? It's connected to that question, why did God have to not only give his son, but as we'll talk about soon, that he'll do something even not only just giving his son, but he will come to this world to do the biggest upside down reversal move that nothing of humanity can ever possibly attain or achieve by their own works. So, you know, if God was like us, we would simply say, you know what, enough of them, right? I told them what to do, and they fell short. We're done, right? We're done. We're done. We're done. Finito. No mas, right? And um, no, this is not what God did. He said, you know, I love them so much. After they fell to sin, after they fell to sin in Genesis 3, what did he do? He gave them the promise that from the offspring of a woman would come the Savior of the world. That he gave the promise, John 3, 16, right? Because it says right there, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Why did he give his only son? So that we would not perish. That means, like a moldy peach, right? As I always say, you know, you go to the store, you look around, you don't buy the moldy peach, you discard, you throw away. I'm not going to buy that, right? Because it's, it's rotten. We're like that moldy peach, aren't we? We're rotten. We are worthy only to be discarded and not be bought, right? We're like set to the side and thrown in the dumpster, right? That's what they do with rotten peaches or rotten produce. And that's what happens in sin. 
Because of sin, because of uh, the first sin in the garden, it says right there in Romans 3.23, why do we perish? For all have sinned and fall short to the glory of God. All of us have sinned, right? Me and you, all of us. This is not just some people. This is everyone. And because of uh, uh, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short to the glory of God, we, we later see, yes, that's right, in Romans 6, for the wages of sin, because of sin, there is, for the wages of sin is death. Right? See, the thing is, and we need to understand this clearly, is that when we speak of the love of God, when we speak of His love, we need His love because we very well know the spiritual condition to which we were all born in ever since the fall in Genesis 3, we call sin. And, and people will say, well, surely I could save myself, right? I mean, I can love God. I could please Him. You know, I could, I could uh, go up to Him and, and climb the proverbial ladder, right? You like my ladder? Or, or I could, uh, you know, like on the, the pool, the, the springboard, you know, you go, you, you jump up and down and, and hopefully you'll elevate or you'll propel yourself all the way up to God by your love and good works and all these things. But the fact is, friends, morality and all these things that we try to do, of course, we're cut to the heart because of our sin. We very well know that according to God's word, as we follow his word for what it says, not what we want it to say, not what we think it says, not what the culture says it is, but based on his word, we are cut to the heart because that word, the law, shows us the commandments. Exodus 20 shows us, it shows us the mirror, it shows us our sin. It shows us the sickness to which we were all born, everyone, born into. Born into, right? We're born into sin. So because of that, this diagram right here is impossible. We can't climb because when we speak of our sin, for the wages of sin is death. Dead people cannot give or do anything to be with God. Spiritually dead people are dead. They, anyone who is dead only can be made alive by someone outside of themselves. Does that make sense? When we look at the spiritual problem here, if we're spiritually dead, we, we cannot springboard up. We cannot climb the ladder up to salvation by our good works and all these things. We don't give anything in a sense of, of, of how we are with God or how we are saved and forgiven and, 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 and have eternal life. This is nothing of our doing, nothing at all, nothing at all. Nothing, right? Because we know that in this spiritual problem, as we see it, we need the love of God, right? Surely I could save myself, but Scripture says, by one man's disobedient, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, right? And that's us. That's the garden. The disobedience is the garden. Um, and we, too, inherit, we receive that sin born into. Um, but also in Isaiah 53, in the Old Testament, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned. We have turned every one to their own way. That is our nature, sin nature. I think it's the elephant in the closet that we do not want to go to or even exposed or even talk about because we very well know uh, our own conscience. We very well know our own guilt, our shame, our sin, right? And when we say God is love in this reality, this is the direction to which this love goes. It's from God to man, right? It is God, what did I say earlier about God's love? His love is, uh, the love of God is his activity for us, right? His activity, his uh, uh, proactive gift of his grace. John three sixteen that he loved the world so much that he gave his only son, 
He gave. He gifted, right? He, he gives to you the love because we need His love because we are dead. We, we deserve to perish. We deserve for the wages of sin is death. All have sinned and fall short to the glory of God. And here by the love of God, what is that love? It is It is Jesus. That's how much He loves you. We are sinners loved by God. Right? We cannot save ourselves. We cannot measure up. But, but look, Pastor, I'll, I'll love God so much, so much, so much, and I know that I'll be good enough. It won't. Because when you understand the spiritual problem here, you very well know it's God's activity. It's God's love. It's the direction to which it needs to be because it has to be. Because we need to be made alive. Resuscitating ourselves as dead, spiritually dead people is impossible. I've never seen anyone resuscitate themselves. Right? And their God gives us life through the sending of His Son. Now, of course, what does that mean? Why, what, why did God send Jesus? Why did the Father send His Son to, uh, to the world? Right? What does this mean? And, um, well, I guess when we look at uh, Matthew one twenty one in the Bible, the angel says, You will name him Jesus, for he will save people from their sins. Jesus saves. Saves us from our sin. Right? Because we can't do that ourselves. You know, I, I think about it. And when we think of betrayal, when we think of, uh, uh, you know, this world, uh, we live in such a quick cancel culture, panic button, we're done with you type environment these days, don't we? It's just a quick reaction. I want nothing to do with you. I'm over you. You know, I'm canceling you out. We're done. There's no sense of forgiveness. There's no sense of mercy and grace. It's just a quick strike of decision and, 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 and conditionals and, and, and full of judgment and wrath. And, and when we talk about ourselves and we talk about the love of God, it's by His mercy, His pity and compassion for us, His love, His grace. Grace means what? It means that we don't deserve it, but out of His love for us, He gives us life. I mean, think about it. God is love. It's a love that we cannot emulate ourselves. It's a love that that's basis is not found in this world, but the basis is found in who God is as he sends us our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not only does he send Jesus to this world, not simply to, to parade and do all these miracles, which is an awesome thing, but all these miracles that he did, you know, everyone would say in this world that Jesus was a good man. Well, we would say, we would agree with that. Jesus is not only good, but he was sinless. He was perfect. He was perfect. Why was he perfect? Not only because he is God, but also in his, in his flesh, the word made flesh. I know we, we could talk about the incarnation all day, but we'll save that for another day. That Jesus dwelt in this land by his very flesh, and there he was faithful and perfect. For what? To be the perfect sacrifice, right? Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Not only did he send his son to this world, but he sent his son to this world to be the sacrifice, to be the death upon the cross. You know, when Jesus was on the cross, his whole life, they were, they were uh, poking and clawing and trying to plot a way uh, to get Jesus, well, to get rid of Jesus. Uh, and, you know, Jesus could have just said, you know what, enough. I'm done with these people. I'm done with humanity. They don't even like me. Why, why am I even here, right? But Jesus, what does he do? 
He continues on the road to the will of God, that God is love, to fulfill the special mission of the cross. The sacrifice upon that very cross. That while we were still sinners, it's not because we measure up Jesus came. No, because we are dead in our sin, Jesus came to this world to be our death to stand in our place, to be our substitute, taking upon the reality of this sin condition upon himself. That's how much he loves you. And he goes to the cross and dies for them. Now again, the environment to which Jesus died was not an easy thing. People hated him. People betrayed him. People scoffed at him. Right? People persecuted him. The Lord still stood the course. He knew that this cross was the only way to which the people would be saved. And though the people hated him, he still died for them. Now, when we speak of love, I always say we put Jesus on the cross. Us too. Our sin. But even in that betrayal of the people, Jesus still went to the cross, and he endured the pain. Do you know the the pain of the cross? It's not just an easy thing. It's the most excruciating thing, crucis, excruciating. You know those two words, crucis, cross, excruciating? The cross is excruciating. It's painful. It's full of long suffering. I can't even imagine what that cross could entail in terms of pain. But that's how much Jesus loves you, right? He came to this world. I mean, look, think about that. God to ma- taken upon this lowly flesh. That's how much he loves you. Not only taken upon the lowly flesh, but, but in that flesh to bear your sin, take those sins upon himself and go to the cross to be the ultimate sacrifice for you, for us sinners, the ones that don't deserve anything at all. But God loves you so much that this is what he came to do. Mark 10, 45. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. He came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. A ransom. He is your ransom payment. We are held hostage in our sin ever since the fall. And Jesus pays the price, not with silver or gold, but with his precious blood shed on the cross on that sacrifice. That's how much he loves you. To wash away your sins. The only way. Not by what you've done, but by what Christ has done for you. Christ redeems us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Galatians 3.13. That curse, again, is our sin. That curse is the separation from God. That curse is the eternal condemnation that nets or that results in us perishing. Right? But Jesus takes upon all this to the cross and he washes away your sin. In terms of righteousness, now because of his love, you are righteous. I always hear it, uh, uh, you know, uh, when we talk about our righteousness, I think a lot of times people think it's what we we have done that makes us righteous. That's called self-righteousness, I guess. But when we talk about the true righteousness of Christ, the righteousness that we are right with God, it's all given by the blood of Christ on that cross. The sacrifice, right? That we are righteous, that we are right in front of God. We have good standing with him. We are in his, we are in that grace, in his status as children of God, all by what Jesus has made right. And that is dying on the cross for you. See, we can't do that. No matter how hard we try to be moral, upstanding beings, which is good, right? To love and serve neighbor. That's great. But in terms of the love of God and forgiveness and salvation and eternal life, we can't possibly, well, it's impossible for ourselves to fulfill those things, to achieve those things, or to earn those things, right? It's only by that God is love that we have the gift of salvation. Not only did he die on the cross, but what happened? The third day he rose from the dead. He rose. 
right there, perish, death. When Jesus rose from the grave that third day, not only did he prove who he is, but there he given you the comfort that he died the big death for you as he overcame the tomb and as he gives, as he gives you life in his name all by that empty tomb. We do not follow a dead Jesus. We follow a risen one. And because we follow a risen one, we very well know that we have the victory to eternal life. Remember, dead people can't make themselves alive. We can't. But our Lord does because he loves you so much. Each, but, I'm, I, but Pastor, I, haven't, I don't know if I measure up. I haven't been a good. I don't think I deserve. I don't think I deserve God's love. Well, Pastor, I, you know, my life has been, you don't even know my life. So much has happened, and I don't even know if I'm even worthy enough. The thing is, Jesus is worthy for you. Jesus is faithful for you. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Jesus rose on the third day to give you that victory. 1 Corinthians 15, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, because God is love. Right? And this is not just any love. Remember that. God's love has washed your sins away. God's love has given you the complete assurance that your life is of eternity and that God has saved you from sin and death and the power of the devil all through his death and resurrection. Right? God is love. We're going to close with this. I know it's time, 30 minutes. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not your own doing. It is a gift from God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. Gift from God. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Gifts are given out of love. Not because we deserve it, not because we earned it, but gifts are given out of love. God gives you the grace, and that is Jesus his death and resurrection, the salvation for your souls. Right? The gospel, the good news. First John 4 again, going back to the top of the handout. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is the love of God. It's not from Hallmark. It's not just an empty platitude. It's not just a feeling. It's the objective love that God gives to us as he comes to this world, as he, as he lives out his life in this world, faithfulness to God and his word, and there he was the perfect sacrifice to save us from the deadness in our sin. So that's the unique love of God. We can't do this ourselves. It's impossible because of our sin. But it's only Christ. His work. The gospel. The ransom payment by his death. Saving us from our sin by his death upon the cross. And also three days later proving all of it through his resurrection. Making us alive from the great and grave, eternally grave disease that we have in sin. All by God's activity. Nothing of ourselves. Only by God's love. That unique love. Not a conditional love, but an unconditional, grace-filled, merciful activity as He sends us His Son into our flesh, into the flesh, to be our Savior. This is love. And when I look at the world today and all that it's going through, The basis of love is very important. The basis of love is Christ. And this is what we pray for constantly, that the love of Christ may continue to be shared throughout the world because the world is hurting right here. The world is hurting in their condition right here. We know it in ourselves. 
we know it in people around us. And the greatest love is Christ, the one who mends our wounds and gives us the great saving message, the gift, so that no one may boast, not by their own doing, but simply by the love of Christ. This is love. This is love. So for all of you who are hearing this, um, may this word go well with you. If you have any questions, uh, please give me a call, email me, um, come to church. If, if you have any questions, you know where I'm at. Um, but for those that uh, aren't from around here, please email me. Please uh, 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 send us a comment um, down below. I'm, I'm not on the computer, so I don't know um, if anyone is um, commenting or not. But I want you to go through this study and really investigate and, and go back through it and ask, yeah, what is the love of God? Um, what is the love of God? Because I think a lot of times we can confuse that message with what we think love is or what the world thinks love is, um, and um, that love can become very blurry. So really study this, and um, hopefully it went well with you, and hopefully I, I unfolded it good enough. I, I know in a short time together. But anyways, uh, until next time, um, yes, may this word go well with you. Let us pray. Dearly Father, O oh Lord, we thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you uh, for Jesus. We thank you for giving us life in your name, knowing full well that by your blood we are cleansed from all our sins. Lord, we know that you are love and that by your mercy you, uh, you have given us the great victorious life. Bless us, O oh Lord, in our faith, our faith in Christ. And lead us, O Lord, always in your love, to love one another always in your and through your name. Lord, for all these things we are thankful. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Until next time, uh, God be with you. And uh, thank you for joining us whenever you're listening. And uh, yeah, may this word go well with you. Until next time, Pastor Jung, Faith Lutheran Church, Moore Park, California. Have a blessed day. And may God be with you. Goodbye.